Hey, welcome to a little tip, tip video about plank form. So let's get right into it. I'm going to do it in forearm plank and show you some things, some common mistakes and how to fix them. And the same things apply to high plank. You know, obviously you're just not on your, your forearms, you're up on the hands. <clears throat> so just starting from top to bottom. So this isn't most important, the least important. We're going to go work through the body, head to toes. All right. So in plank, in forearm plank, your nice and long body tends, tendencies with the head is to look forward or to let your head hang. You want to keep your neck long. So I like to look between my hands or a little ahead of them. So my neck is more in line with the rest of my spine and not, you know, making this crank in your neck or letting it hang. All right. So next thing we will talk about shoulders. So with the shoulders, you want to make sure you're over your, your elbows. Right, not too far forward. We're not going back like we're going to go into downward dog. I'm going to keep the shoulders over the elbows and not rest. Where see how my upper body drops down? I'm going to keep pushing against the floor. So it's not resting on the shoulders, pushing. All right. Next thing is to another thing is to keep the forearms parallel. We prefer that. You can always do it like this, but it's going to affect how it works the shoulders. So. Keeping them parallel is going to is gonna basically make your shoulders work a little harder um, to do the same thing. Just to keep pushing up, same thing, same kind of action, but you're going to put in a little more effort, which is what we want, right? We're not trying to find the easy way up to, to, to do these things. We're trying to, trying to challenge ourselves and to do them properly to get the muscles to, to work and come back stronger. All right, next. So we're through the arms, the shoulders, the head, the neck. So your body, you're just thinking neutral spine. So sometimes I see this where my lower back, see how my lower back dropped a lot versus more like neutral or rounding like hips going up. So rounding is less common, but hips up is common. You want to keep your hips down and to keep from letting your belly sagging, letting your belly sag like this or letting that lower back arch a lot. You want to suck your stomach in, squeeze your butt, and even think a little bit, tuck your tailbone. So see, my tailbone's kind of going up here. I'm gonna tuck. So it just means your tailbone, instead of pointing up towards the ceiling, you wanna bring it down a little bit. And it's not drastic, what I'm doing, right? It's not like my tailbone's going from like this to this. My tailbone is just going from like being a little up to more in line. And that's all you want. So that little bit of tuck with your tailbone will also help you engage your abs, which is what you want. All right, moving down now past the hips. So we did tucked backs and hips there. Back and hips, not backs. <laughs> we don't have more than one. All right, but we're moving to the legs. So your legs are strong, which is not usually a problem. Your heels are pushing back. Let me walk forward a little bit so you see it. Your heels are pushing back. So you don't want your toes out behind you like that. It's like your feet are flexed, right? your heels back, toes tucked under. And that's it. I mean, if you do those things and just kind of scan your body, we went top to bottom, but scan your body that way, see what's going on. Always something is going to change. I find it in myself too. Sometimes I'll notice, oh, you know, my belly's loose, it's hanging down, or the same with the tailbone. For my tendency is it'll start to go up a little bit. I have to tuck it a little bit down to keep that good form. And that's it, keep working on it, don't give up.